Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Nest. I'm Jack Bartek. What a historic season it has been for the women's lacrosse team this year. Whether it was knocking off TCNJ for the first time in program history, receiving a national ranking for the first time since 2012, or even individual records, such as Brittany Costigan breaking the school's all-time draw control mark, it seems like there's been milestones around every corner. It all culminated this week as they received the number one seed in the NJAC tournament, the last goal on the checklist, winning the school's first ever NJAC championship. The pregame of this semifinal wasn't like any other game. The team spent some of that time watching the matchup between Rowan and powerhouse TCNJ. That was the other semifinal, and TCNJ came out with the 19-12 win, so Montclair State now had a face to put on the finals if they could get past Stockton. On what seems to be the hottest night of the year so far, the women's lacrosse team takes on Stockton in the NJAC semifinals. The winner of this one set to take on TCNJ in the championship. It was a back and forth battle. The entire first half, now the game tied at five. Caitlin Arcidi finds Brittany Costigan, cutting down the middle for the score. Montclair State retakes the lead six to five, but Stockton wouldn't go down without a fight. Jennifer Toll scores on the free position shot, 38 seconds left in the half. That makes it 9-6 and gives Stockton a little bit of hope as the half was coming to a close. But right before the buzzer sounded, our CD takes a sliding shot, finds the back of the net with 8 seconds left, throwing her stick down with emphasis as the Redhawks go into the half with a 5-goal lead, 11-6. In the second half, Alan Lillian only allowed 4 goals on 13 shots on goal, which was highlighted by these two saves, one coming 12 minutes into the second half against Michelle Pascrell in the free position. The other with eight minutes remaining, she shuts down the Ospreys again, this time against Casey Schultz. Lillian's reflexes and skills on point in this one. And on the attack, Christian Conan had a fantastic scoring night. Seven goals, here are the two that really stood out. The first one, a sweet backhanded goal. Her sixth of the game, the Redhawks up 17 to nine. And the second with just over three minutes left, Montclair State already up big. Conan scores on the free position. That goal would seal the win as Montclair State takes care of business 20-10. Now the team will try to do the unimaginable and beat TCNJ for the second time this season. I think when at the very end of the first half when we started getting those fast break goals, it's just us settling in. Stockton's a tough team and they're super aggressive. So I think, you know, we were getting bumped around a little bit, uh, both ends, and just kind of having them settle in. So once we did have those goals coming back, those fast break goals, possession was key in playing our game on offense. We have confidence coming off this season. Uh, there's a lot of trust between our teammates. We have a lot of upperclassmen that have played together. We lost our season last year, and that is a driving force. We come out here to play and win and play our best game each and every day. TCJ Saturday, again, we've been in the championship with them before. We've never hosted a breather number one seed, but it's just pretty much for us playing as a team, and we have been, and there, we have that spark, we have that chemistry. So play like we did the first time we played them. You know, that, that's our hope, and that's where we're going to focus. So now that the Red Hawks and the Lions both punched their tickets to the championship, let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Montclair State finished their conference slate undefeated, while TCNJ suffered one loss at the hands of the Red Hawks back in early April. The conference has been all TCNJ the last decade, winning nine titles in a row and ten of the last eleven championships since the conference inception in 2009. Montclair State has yet to capture the trophy. But this year, it's been Montclair State dominating the conference, leading the league in goals for with 125 and goals against with 56. TCNJ is not far behind, though, in second in each category, with 120 goals for and 67 goals against. And so the Lions headed up to Sprague Field with revenge on their mind, this time playing for an NJAC championship. Three minutes into the game, a foul by the Red Hawks set up Anna Devlin for the free position shot. She buries it, the first goal of the afternoon. And then about a minute later, Anna Wright, weaving through the defense, puts a shot past the keeper for an early 2-0 lead. And TCNJ just continued to control the possession. Another foul, Devlin took advantage, scored her third of the game. 
the Lions would go on to score seven unanswered to start the game. With about 12 minutes remaining in the first half, Harry Dorn finally finds the bottom corner. That made it a 7-1 game. And the Red Hawks seemed to have more energy towards the end of the half. Another one, Doran, this time feeding Morgan Conan. She finishes the job. That makes the score 8-2. And with just under three minutes to go, Doran finds Caitlin Arcidi this time. Flashing in the middle, they score another one that cuts the lead down to five. But the visitors would strike back with 30 seconds to go in the half. Devlin scores her fifth of the day. Both squads head to the half, TCNJ leading 9-3. to three. Some members of the men's lacrosse team on hand to support right before their semifinal matchup, but TCNJ wasted no time getting back on the scoring column in the second half. Jillian Westerby absorbs the contact and scores to make it 11-3. The Red Hawks kept their hope alive. Rihanna Brown ripping one in the top left corner with 25 minutes to play, but another free position shot and Westerby gets the job done. That made the score 13-4. They'd never look back. The Red Hawks put up a heck of a fight, but they couldn't mount the comeback and TCNJ took home the conference crown. After an undefeated regular season, the Montclair State women's lacrosse team unfortunately fell short in the title game to powerhouse TCNJ, who's won the conference now every year since 2011. They still held hope though for an at-large bid in the NCAA Division III tournament, but unfortunately their number was not called thus ending their season at 8-1, a season to be proud of nonetheless. Now, I'm going to send it over to our very own Max Strauss down at Kane University to see how our men's lacrosse team fared in their CSAC semifinal matchup. Max? Thanks, Jack. Here at Kane University, as the Cougars take on the Red Hawks in the CSAC men's lacrosse semifinal, March 12th, Kane came to Springfield and defeated the Red Hawks 9-7, breaking up Montclair State's undefeated run. Last Wednesday, these two teams here at Kane battled out for the two seed in the conference. Kane dominated to a 14-2 victory, dropping Montclair State to the three seed. Tonight, the Red Hawks will try to right the ship and hope that a third time is a charm if they want to continue their season. Round three of this CSAC rivalry got underway at Alumni Stadium. Tensions were high to start out, but both teams were hungry to come out victorious. It was Kane's game early on as they jumped to a quick 4-0 lead in the first four minutes with Max Stevens winning the faceoff and continuing into the zone for the goal. In the second quarter, after a minor penalty by Kane, Montclair had a man-up opportunity. Forward Mike McCurry snapped the shot to break the drought. The score was now 4-1. Later in the second quarter, the Red Hawks were trying to get back into the game. Midfielder Connor McCoy scored off an excellent feat from fellow midfielder Nick Dutour. This cut the deficit to 2, 5-3. Under two minutes in the first half remaining, and the fourth unanswered goal by Kane scored by Connor Batcher, assisted by Greg Castor. That was one of Batcher's four goals on the night. The Cougars took a 9-3 lead into the break. The closest the Red Hawks got to Kane was a five-goal margin in the second half. Kane capped off the night with just under a minute left in the game. Scoring was Alex Hufford. That would be the final score of 16-7. Montclair State season comes to a close as Kane wins all three matchups this season and will play the number one seed Stockton in the championship game. You know, I was proud of our effort the uh, entire time and uh, we we're kind of right there. You know, without those four goals, we're at 5-3, we get a really crucial man up. Unfortunately, we don't convert on it. I think that's a big point, you know, of the game, even though it's that early in the game, uh, second quarter. Uh, you know, that was, a, that was a pivotal point and then, uh, you know, I got to give uh, Kane, uh, you know, commend them on their, uh, their game. You know, they played well, they were tough and, uh, you know, I think uh, our mistake kind of ended up hurting us a little bit too much. We played a little too much defense than we wanted to and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, their, their, their goal is uh, sensational and we, uh, you know, took some time to, to get it past them, but, uh, you know, it wasn't enough time to, uh, you know, keep up with them per se. You know, we, uh, you know, it was a rough year. It was a hard year, and I, I told the guys out after that, um, you know, this was not easy to come out every morning and practice through this, and uh, you know, deal with, uh, you know, obviously a pandemic and testing and this and that, and asking them to basically lock themselves down in their uh, rooms and apartments and uh, houses for three and a half months, but the commitment they showed and, uh, um, you know, resiliency and, and, and fight to get through this thing and keep coming out every day and working hard and playing is uh, uh, definitely something they should be proud of. We don't want to dismiss these seniors. They, they've been through a lot here uh, at Montclair State. And, uh, 
you know, take a little bit of, take a little bit of uh, them with us as we head into uh, uh, the future here. And, uh, you know, always remember, uh, you know, that, that class had to lead us through some tough times in the world, let alone on our team and uh, everything of that nature to, uh, you know, keep going in the right direction. We had some Red Hawks on the road this past week, all baseball and softball as they continued their march towards the playoffs last week of the regular season. The softball team went to William Patterson and swept a pair from them for their fifth and sixth wins in a row. Then on Thursday, the baseball team went to William Patterson and behind a 10-run third inning took home a 12-9 victory. But unfortunately, they headed to Rowan on Saturday and dropped a pair to the number 11 team in the country heading into the playoffs. Brackets were released for the 2021 Baseball and Softball NJAC tournaments. Let's see where our Red Hawks ended up. After dropping their last three of the season, the men's baseball team finished with the four seed. They will welcome the five seeded Kane to Yogi Berra Stadium. The two squads split a pair just under two weeks ago. As for softball, they won six straight before falling to Rowan twice on Saturday. They were still rewarded with the number three seed taking on Stockton, with whom they split two games with earlier in April. Both of these matchups will take place Friday, May 7th in a doubleheader format with a deciding Game 3 on Saturday if necessary. It promises to be a fun weekend as both teams host their first home playoff games since 2014. You're going to want to tune in for this week's upcoming games as five of our Red Hawk teams are scheduled to play. Baseball is now entering the NJAC Championship Tournament with the best out of three game series for the quarterfinals on May 7th and the 8th. Softball schedule mirrors baseball as they enter the NJAC Championship as well. Their best of three quarterfinals is on the 7th and 8th of May. Women's Outdoor Track and Field have their NJAC Championship heptathlon on May 5th and 6th in Ewan, New Jersey, and finish the NJAC Championship meet on Saturday, May 8th in Mawa, New Jersey. Men's Outdoor Track and Field also have their NJAC Championship decathlon on the 5th and 6th in Ewan, and finish their championship meet in Mawa on May 8th. Good luck to all of our Red Hawks in this upcoming week of competition. Two juniors on the women's lacrosse team made NJAC Team of the Week. Midfielder Tristan Conan was Offensive Player of the Week. Conan scored seven goals and had four assists. And defender Catherine Yerusso was Defensive Player of the Week. Shanker the defense of their first win versus Rowan since 2017. Baseball keeps rolling with catcher Anthony Garino winning Player of the Week in the NJAC. Garino hit 647 with 11 hits, four runs scored and eight RBIs and two doubles. Center fielder Mike Murphy was NJAC Rookie of the Week. Murphy hit 533 with two doubles and nine RBI and recorded two hits in each game. First baseman Kayla Gallo was named NJAC Player of the Week. Gallo had a batting average and an on-base percentage of 538, with a slugging percentage of 1.231. Ali Cavallero claimed NJAC Rookie of the Week after only giving up one run over 13 innings over two starts and a 2-0 record. Taylor Brown received her most prestigious honor as she was named to the 2021 Women's Basketball Coaches Association NCAA Division III Coaches All-American Team, and in addition, Brown was selected as a member of the 2021 Women's Collegiate All-Star Team. Men's Lacrosse took home 12 CSAC awards, with five members on First Team All-CSAC, three Second Team All-CSAC, and four honorable mentions. The five players to make the first team were Tyler McCreary, Wilson Smith, Kyle Matthews, Christian Boyle, and Joe Covino. Women's Lacrosse also received high NJAC awards. Allie Lillian was Goaltender of the Year, Megan Gorman Defensive Player of the Year, and Brittany Kosigan Midfielder of the Year. Megan Malstad and Tristan Conan were first team, and Nicole Parsaluzzi winning Coach of the Year. Here are your top plays of the week. We started up at the CSAC tournament where Mike McCreary puts on the moves to get past his first defender and score. A fine time fake sets up Montclair State's first goal of the game. He's a 2-1. Smacked out and re-catches it and dives to the base for the double play. 
What a play from Amber Reed. She made a couple of those in game one, but this is her finest of the day so far. The final possession of this half, moving out and in. Our CD, a slide and a score! My goodness, <laughs> and that is beautiful! Boom! On Claire Slade, our CD finding room in front, a great feed, and finishing through the contact. I'm Kayla Francione here at Brookdale Park with John and Christine Griffith, the sibling standouts from the men's and women's track and field team. We're here today so they can show me the ropes of how to throw shot put. We have lots of work to do, so let's get to it. Okay guys, let's kind of start with the basics. What do I need to know here? So first with the shot put, there are two different types. First, the female shot put, which is smaller, it's about eight pounds. And the men's shot put, clearly a little bit larger. That is actually 16 pounds. So oh, we're not gonna have you throw a bowling ball today. We're gonna God. have you use the female shot put. Okay. So go ahead, you can pick that one up. All right. And with the shot put, we don't want to rest it just on our palm. We kind of want it in the crescent right along the top of our palm and really holding it with our thumb. Okay. And with this, we really want to make sure that we're throwing this as high as possible so then we're getting the most distance okay all right so does it feel nice and comfortable not too bad awesome. it still feels pretty good and now all we're going to do we're going to rest it on your neck like so kind okay. of have your elbow pointing out to the sidewalk got it and all you're going to do is just aim above those trees and let go all right, not too bad for the first one. <laughs> so it honestly must be like pretty fun to compete together, especially in the same event. But you honestly, you are a graduate student, like he said, you're older. So you spent your first four years at William Patterson playing softball and volleyball. So how did you transition here and end up playing or taking part in track and field? Great question. So yes, at William Patterson, I played both volleyball and softball for four years loved every minute of it mm -hmm. um, not only is just playing one collegiate sport hard but balancing two comp uh, competing um, throughout the entire year is difficult right. however the team athletic staff and my coaches were really accommodating so i think we have the basics down here now so what is the next step john where do i go from here so for the next step we're going to start incorporating our lower bodies so okay we're going to have the shot put okay the top part of a hand locked mm -hmm. into the thumb in our neck okay now we're going to have the left foot in front bring your right foot a little bit in front of that left in the back got it and we're going to bring our body around snapping our right foot and then releasing out oh. okay <laughs> not too bad have you guys ever been competitive with one another well you would expect us to be really trying to compete against one another but we actually don't we kind of more push each other to our full potential the way that we are as athletes is we don't really focus on our rankings or the distance that we get it's more of that internal competitiveness against ourselves. So the NJAC championships are coming up. You guys are competing on the 8th and 9th against at Ramapel, right? So what's your mindset kind of going into that? So for me, I just I want to uh, better myself. I want to get a better uh, personal best than I had before. And I would also like to win the event so I could score more points for the team. Yeah, I mean, you've been putting up quite the numbers, so I have no doubt there for you. And what about you? For me, I already have my personal goals, which are both being as confident as I can be throughout the entire meet, but then also having fun. Right. And not only is that those two elements help me bring out the best performance that I can, but I also want to instill that throughout my entire team. Um, if we're not all having fun, then what's the point of doing track? Exactly. Tell me a little bit about this. Similar with the shot put, we kind of want our feet nice and wide, bend mm -hmm. those knees. And you see on the javelin, this kind of rope thing, mm -hmm. this is actually your handle. Okay. And you kind of want to not only 
put your hand near the edge of it, but you kind of want to push against this rope with your thumb and your index finger. Perfect. There you go. So nice and set. We're going to bring this javelin all the way up where that silver metal part is. Okay. Right above your eyebrow. All right. Nice. And really extend your arm. Try to keep it as straight as possible. <laughs> You're right. Don't try to <laughs> Same with shot put. Lean back into that right leg and throw over the tree. Oh, no. you're still landing, mine did not. <laughs> what are some of your goals? I mean, you're already doing outstanding, so where do you want to go from here for your next years? Honestly, I just want to keep beating myself every day. Uh, I really want to just keep progressing, and uh, I don't have a set goal for my senior year, but uh, by the progress I'm making now, I'm very really excited for what I could do in the future. Perfect. And who knows, maybe you'll be a graduate student taking up another sword. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out today. It means a lot to us. And thanks for showing me how to shop put. Of course, our pleasure. Thank you so much for reaching out to us and giving us the opportunity to teach you what we do. Of course. And good luck at the championship. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>